how to add structured data to a website in this video session i'm going to show you techniques for adding structured data to a particular website i will show you some wordpress examples as well as shopify examples knowing that it doesn't matter what type of website and what type of content management system is being used for the website. The techniques for adding structured data, as in the principles, are the same. The only thing that differs is the coding of the content management system. First thing to do when adding structured data to a website is identify the URL structure. For a typical Shopify store, we have the, the domain, which is the website. Then we may have collection URLs. For WordPress example, they would be categories. So collection cat, collections in Shopify is category in WordPress, for example. Once you identify the URL structure, then what you can do is start looking at the page structure itself. You can press on F12, and most websites do have a menu structure, for example, that could be marked up as site navigation element. Typical WordPress site, let's imagine our balance page as we can see even wordpress has the menu structure so same thing can be done here that section which is the menu can be marked up differently then let's look at the content area that's the content area whether you're using visual composer elementor or typical wordpress theme you'll have the content area. Let's imagine a product URL. We'll have product sections on product URLs. Contact page, about us page for local business is very important. So then you identify the URL structure and the web page layer. Once you do that, then you can say, okay, what structured data can I include? First, you can obviously check Google rich snippets, which is structured data, because if Google supports it, that's definitely going to be helpful for any website. Then you need to explore schema.org vocabulary to say, hmm, if I'm marking up a local business, what else can I do, for example? Or, if I'm marking up a product, what else can I do? Meaning, just because Google supports certain data types, doesn't mean you're limited in terms of just using that. But rather, look at this as well. So, once you identify the sections and the URL patterns, then it's just a matter of coding it. Let's imagine a Shopify theme dot liquid will give you options for modifying the HTML tag. Then you identify the sections the content management system uses. For Shopify, let's look at um, footer liquid and header liquid because header portion may contain menu element for example footer dot liquid obviously here we've got the footer section here right but we can mark them up differently as in the footer can be marked up differently as i'll show you in a second so whether you're using shopify or different content management system first you identify the url structure 
Then identify web page elements by hovering over certain elements, looking at menu, and you need to find out how that is generated. For this example, let's look at where the menu is. That's the menu. So when you press F12 on the keyboard, grab the arrow and hover over the areas. The next step for adding structured data to a website is by modifying the code. I'll show you WordPress example. Let's look at the header here. Because that's how WordPress generates the HTML. We can run WordPress spe specific functions. If it's front page, it's a website. If it's search results, it's search results page. Sitemap or categories will be collection page. For Shopify, collection URLs obviously is collection page. Contact page is contact page. So you begin with HTML. Next, you identify the menu structure. Yeah. Each content management system will generate this differently. So what I can show you without complicating things is by just showing you this example here. So let's take a look. HTML5 nav element can be marked up as site navigation element because that's exactly what they are. It's a menu that allows someone to navigate throughout the website. Then certain HTML tags can use role attributes. If the menu is structured using an, or an ordered list, the list item can be, you know, you can add key value pairs such as item prop, which is the property of that item, is name. Then the URL item prop is URL. Titles on links are important for accessibility, so you should definitely use them. Then next list element follows the same principles. So for WordPress, you need to identify how that menu is generated and code, as in add these structured data to the nav element or UL. Site navigation element is that. Content area can change. We can have main entity of page by using link. The article section can become main entity of page. The footer section, since that is an important web page element, can be marked up as web page footer. We don't really need to use certain roles such as content info, but you definitely then can read the docs to say, okay, is that in there? If not, then you say role content info because these are to do with ARIA roles. Some HTML5 tags don't need to use them, but that option is there, so I'm covering many angles. Now, let's take a look at a typical local business. Let me open up the source code. That's an About Us page. Any information, such as the title. Okay, well, that's About Us page. Let's look at the home page. That's the website. Title can have item property name as well. Because Google supports that. Site names. Okay, I know it can get more complex, but that's this is the only way to truly utilize structured data. Now, in this scenario, we modified the footer, right? So then 
footer for WordPress usually comes from footer.php. So we could do, well, yours will be empty if you don't have the structured data, but yours would be something like this perhaps. And you simply code that markup to say that's a web page footer section. Let me quickly show you the Shopify example because it'll make sense. As to say, it doesn't matter what content management system is being used. So now that's the footer. We can just add that there and save the file. That's why you don't want to use plugins or apps to add this because they can't do this. So structured data can be complex because websites can be complex. Let's imagine a typical product URLs. When you mark up the product using JSON LD, that may be ideal, but that's a lazy way to add structured data sometimes. That means one may consider coding the theme itself because then everything is working automatically and the website and the web pages are marked up thoroughly. So let me wrap it up. You first identify the URL structure because collection pages are different and you need to mark them up different. Contact page, about us page, services page, these are different and they are usually structured different as in the web page elements are different. Then you begin with HTML tag. Navigation, since it's important, you can add site navigation element. Content area will change for Obviously, e-commerce sites, they can become the product. For typical WordPress site, the content area can become perhaps a blog post for blog posts. For web pages, they can differ. As I've said, we can mark up main entity item prop. To be able to then, you know, extend the markup you look here here it says product products can have offers it can have rating it can have a brand it can have target audience or even awards it can have different identifiers so this is where you need to look because your website may have certain information that you may want to code. Item condition, is it brand new? Is it used? Keywords. That's why, you see, you're learning with Ranker. When you mark up the HTML, then you can use keywords. Keyword meta tags. I'll show you this example. If you're actually using WordPress and SEO plugins like you always tell you not to use it, see how backward thinking they are for recommending not to use keywords. Because for WordPress, your tags become keywords. And you can use item prop or meta tags as well. And if the product markup can support that, how can you not use it? So, let me finalize this video session because adding structured data to a website should be following this approach. Because then you're taking advantage of what Google supports as well as what else you can do. That is how you add structured data to a website. Identify the URL patterns, identify web page elements on different parts of a website, and then you need to code the theme itself. Surely, you can grab some examples from, let's say, 
Google Developer section, let's look at the sample example. Let's imagine we have this markup here. We can grab that, go to the tester, and then code snippet, run the test, and here we can modify it. Let's say my grand grandma's apple pie. Modify the JSON LD. We could do this too. You know, who's the person creating this recipe? But then you got the schema.org. You look at recipe and say, okay, well, can I add more information? Recipe category. We can then say that's the name of the recipe. Date publish is this. Description is this. Prep type time is 20 minutes. Let's add recipe category and say sweets. Let's test to see. Hmm. It is categorized as sweets. That's how you go back and forth because then you're doing things better. I thank you for learning with Rankia and I'll talk with you in the next video session.